Rock, rock, raggy. Holy f did you guys see that? Rock, rock, rock. Wait, is he upstairs or downstairs? Upstairs, upstairs. There's no ragdolls, Lewis. There's no rag. Boys, let's see if I don't get kicked again. I don't understand how we getting kicked though. Like they sound European and I'm European. Like what's what's? I mean, again, because it's console UI or whatever. Where, I, it would be nice to be able to see people's ping, but are you, are you getting kicked? Yeah, I keep getting kicked. I'm gonna how? disappear any second. Okay, there's something wrong with the server. There's something seriously wrong with that server. I'm sorry. Yo, what's up, boys, and welcome back to another video. Armory Forger has almost been out for two weeks now, and since then, there have been pages upon pages, over 40 plus right now, pages on the Armory Forger workshop of mods. What I wanted to do today is condense all of those pages down into one short-ish video of the best mods. In my first two Armoury Forger videos, I've really put a big emphasis on how big the modding side of Armoury Forger can be because it's just so much more accessible and so much easier to install and play with mods, to join a random server, to instantly just download the map, whatever else is required uh, compared to Armour 3 and Armour 2. I'll have timestamps to all the different mods which I'm going to be showing you in today's video on the timeline if you want to skip to one. And if you guys do like this idea and want to see more, make sure to drop a like and a comment and I will try to make some more videos highlighting the more interesting mods. Alternatively, if you don't mind watching me comb through the worst mods, then make sure to follow me on Twitch, link in the top description. That's where pretty much all the footage from this video is taken from. These mods might not blow your socks off, but hopefully we should give you an idea of where we are like I said, two weeks after launch, no, there's not a Daisy mod, no, there's not a life mod, but we are starting to see some things which are rather impressive and couldn't necessarily even be replicated in Armour 3. Unfortunately, the modded map, which are shown in the intro, won't be featured in this list because the server didn't work. But that's not a mod's fault, it's the server's fault. Every single mod shown in this video, you can either try off yourself on multiplayer by filtering by modded server, or you can just go on a workshop and install the mods manually. Anyway, let's hop in. So the first one is probably the most interesting of a bunch. I'm sure you guys can see what it is without me even telling you. It's essentially Minecraft, but in armor, something that hasn't been done with other armor games before. Um, I'm not sure if I entirely want it to be done, but this mod was made by Listic and it actually features a lot of very cool things, which we've never seen in an armor game, primarily it being Minecraft, but also it actually has procedural generation. So when you walk around, the world will be generated as proven in this test map, which also comes with this Minecraft mod. In the mod, you can dig, you can go to bedrock, you can you can play it multiplayer as well. You can put down crafting benches, you can craft things. If you hit down a tree, you can then make planks and from that plank, you make a chest. Um, that's, that's actually about it. But regardless, mods like this are why I have so much excitement and so much hope for Armory Forger and Infusion as an engine to hold the future of these sandbox games is because things like this can be created rather quickly and seamlessly. I still haven't really talked too much with modders, but it does seem like the modding tools with Reforger are just uh, more flexible and nimble than what we've seen with previous Armour games. Making something like this in Armour 3 just seems to be not possible. Listic has some kind of obsession with making really weird and shit mods, so uh, keep it up, Listic. I like them a lot. This one was definitely the shit so far though, good job. Next on our list is a destruction mod, something which a lot of people complained about so far with Reforger being out, is that there's no building destruction, there's no destruction of any kind really in the entire game other than like maybe running over some wooden fence. This mod changes that. According to a mod description, this technically isn't even a mod, it's more so just enabling something that's already there in the game, but still at this point it is a mod so it's going to make it into the list. Maybe this feature in Armoury Forger isn't something Bohemia want people to see right now, but it's still good to see as a proof of concept that we will be able to destroy the furniture, I'm assuming also being, being able to destroy the actual buildings theirself eventually as well. A real nice attention to detail really bringing it up from Armour 3, especially if you go just watch some Armour 3 gameplay in, you know, Altus or wherever else. There's no furniture, but now there's furniture, and you can even blow it up. Next up is the most impressive weapon that I've seen so far. This is a Mark 18, which comes with an attachment for the Elkin Spectre DR 1-4 optical sight. Mark 18 is not only a very nice piece of modern weaponry, but also this sight just looks phenomenal with the 3D scopes that Reforger can achieve. I really feel like without seeing a scope like this, you don't really fully understand how good the 3D scopes are with the upgrade in Reforger. 
This weapon mod comes with iron sights. You can take the iron sight completely off, which is something you can't do with any weapon in Reforger right now. And then if you do put the Elkin Spectre on, you can run around with a 1x scope and be able to do close quarter combat or if you want to do a bit of longer range combat with that 4x as well. It does have a removable IR emitter, but this thing right now is purely cosmetic. It's not something that is in Armory Forger. There's no night vision, there's no IR emitters, there's no flashlights even for your guns. But I'd imagine this is something we will see eventually with the game. I'm personally just looking forward to someone adding a flashlight attachment for a weapon in the game because, of course, there are already flashlights in the game. It would require a bit of work to make it actually attach to a weapon and then have it toggleable through some kind of button, which obviously there's no custom buttons which you can add with reforger <coughs> consoles uh so that's unfortunate but we'll see what happens with that one i'm excited to uh see future mods we've got some honorable mentions in the background as well a tommy gun and a pp bison but this one really the animations the sounds everything it, it was good enough quality i would say to pass in the full game other than the fact that it only has one attachment but mods can add even more attachments or one scope you know some red dots all that kind of stuff looking forward to see how those ones look as well Next up, we have these landmines. These were so much fun to play with. At first, I thought because of the long list of things that the mod creator wanted to add in the mod description, that this thing wasn't going to be operational at all. When I first tried it, I literally couldn't get it to blow up. But after playing with it a bit more, I did manage to get it to blow up nice and good. It works. It fucking works. It fucking works. The cool thing about this is simply there aren't landmines in the game. I, I don't actually know how he did this. Maybe there is some kind of code for it or something. Because if you double click on the mine, you can change things like uh, the amount of weight that needs to be on it to make it activate, the activation time, and I believe one more parameter, which I'll have on your screen right now. So I, I don't know how he did it. It's pretty impressive um, considering there's no mines in the game. In fact, even looking at armor free, there are mines in that game. But I don't think they're anywhere near as um, cool as these ones for some reason. Explosions as a whole in Reforger both look and sound pretty good. So maybe it's mostly that that's carrying the mine. But what I like to see the most with these mods in Reforger is simply things that aren't really present in the game at all, but being added through mods in such a short span of time, which is why although the Minecraft mod's pretty funky, I gotta respect that. And this mine is another one which I respect big time. So good job, Vicar. Uh, I hope you continue to add to your arsenal of landmines. We've managed to get Minecraft in this video, and also now we have got some Halo in the video. We've got some da -da -da -da, we've got some Master Chef. So this is a map, which there are a decent few maps right now on Reforger, but none of them are really very playable. They're not very complete because there's a lot of work that needs to be done to place down buildings. You can't just copy and paste buildings instantly, at least from Armour Free. People haven't quite worked out how to do that. In fact, I've only seen one modded building the entire time I've played Reforger. In, in the past 10 days and, and it's not very good the doors don't work on it so yeah buildings people are working them out but yeah this is blood gulch it's playable it's uh red versus blue kind of map there's, there's caves on it uh there's, there's really not much to say about it because it is still in its early days but it's just nothing quite like this that was ever made in armor free and all of its years of being out i really should just talk to the modders more to understand what's going on with them to understand um if the armor reforger tools are a big step forward, because from an outside uh, looking in, it certainly looks like that. Uh, but, but yeah, really awesome to see. I love the Halo franchise. We did see quite a lot of Halo mods for armor free, and I'd imagine we're going to see some more for reforger, not just Blood Gulch. The next one technically isn't a mod, but it's still something which is very modified versus the original reforger experience. And it's probably the experience I recommend you guys try out the most because it's just so easy to jump in. Everyone understands it. It is Rush from Battlefield, but on Armory Forger. You might notice a lot of things here where we just have other games, but in armor. I enjoy seeing those things in armor for some reason, so hopefully you guys do, do too. The reason I enjoy this game mode so much is because, well, Battlefield Rush is just a, a really fun game mode in my opinion. But on top of that, it obviously has VoIP, so you can mock your enemy while killing them if that's what you're into. That's not something you can do in Battlefield. But it also comes with a bunch of other bonuses, which other mods, missions, whatever else, don't have on Reforger right now, like a kill feed and also a kill sound, random time and weather being set each time the match resets. And I don't know who placed down all of the things for this game mode, but they really just made the most out of the Armor Reforger Everon world by 
bringing the player through some interesting points of interest. In fact, this massive factory building I had never seen in like 25 hours of playing Reforger until playing Reforger Rush or whatever it's called. This is also a real testament to how many different buildings that are on the Everon map because I'm still finding new buildings to this day. Although it's not like I've spent hours purely just looking around the map, it's still cool to be like, hmm, have I seen this map before? Versus on R3 and also DayZ to a certain degree, it does feel like sometimes, oh, this city is just a copy and paste of another city, essentially. That's how some of them do feel. They don't have their own unique vibes and feels like you will see on every single part of Everon. The last two mods I wanted to mention really quickly are the first two modded vehicles that I've seen. They're both really rough around the edges, but they look cool from the outside, terribly on the, on the inside. They go very, very fast, and I'm just excited to see with the car physics in this game, how things work when we have maybe like a racing map. I've seen someone do a time trial uh, mod. I don't know if that's public, but I've seen someone upload that on, on YouTube. Looks awesome. I think modded vehicles are going to be awesome in Reforger and Armor Fall. You guys need to try out those vehicles uh, firsthand and, and realize how much of an upgrade at least they seem right now versus what we have on previous Armor games. Anyway, going to wrap up this video here again because I'm trying to make videos um, which just are not as long because 40 minutes is a good time to fall asleep in. Anyway, hope you guys did enjoy the video. Again, if you want to see some more like this, leave a like, leave a comment. And if there's any mods you want me to check out, which I might have missed, then leave a comment. Or if you're a mod creator and you want to share some knowledge about mods and stuff, I'd love to hear from you as well. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.